With its largely similar design and internal specs to last year's Pixel 4a 5G, the Pixel 5a feels very much like the previous Pixel. So let's see if the price of the Pixel 5a is worth it considering it's still rocking the same specs as last year's model. So this new phone looks nearly identical to the old one. Technically it is slightly taller and slightly narrower and even slightly thicker, but no one is really gonna be able to tell a difference unless you put them side by side. Now, the only, I'd say, difference design-wise is, of course, this new colorway and the Pixel 5a's gray rigid lock button. The 4a only came in a solid black colorway with the flat gray lock button. But aside from that, it's practically the same exact device. Now, looking at the front of this device, you do have this hole punch cutout at the top left corner, and the back still has that matte finish, but rather than being built out of plastic, it now does have a metal body, but it feels more like plastic. It's similar to that coating we had on the Pixel 5 last year. The glossy glass covered camera block at the top left corner stands out. There's a circular indent at the back for the fingerprint sensor, which actually works really well, and it's slightly deeper than the one that we got on the 4a 5G. Otherwise, both aspects feel very similar to last year's phone. Um, it's, again, practically the same looking device. So for the very first time in the A series phones, the Pixel 5a does have a dust and water resistant rating, which is IP67. This means it can be submerged up to one meters of water for half an hour. It's a small improvement, but will reassure those who are worried about dropping their phones in the water or using their device in the rain. Um, will be fine and you're not gonna have to worry about your device being damaged if you find yourself in those circumstances. The stereo system on this device actually sounds pretty decent, definitely better than the under display system we got with the Pixel 5. Now, with all of that said, I still prefer to use earphones for consuming media. Recently, I've been using the new Jaybird Vista 2s, which work really well with Android devices like the Pixel 5a. I've been using Jaybird earphones for over five years now, so I'm excited to have them sponsor a portion of this review. The Vistas 2 have this new fabric exterior that complements that active design language that Jaybird is going for. I like the small profile of the Vistas 2 because it doesn't awkwardly like bulge out of my ears like a ton of other True Wireless earphones, and it's small enough to tightly fit after long workout sessions. I definitely appreciate the addition of active noise canceling and an application that I can control those features on because I've been traveling a lot this year. If you're in the market for some wireless earphones, the Jaybird Vistas 2s are some of the best in the market and you can easily pick it up at your local Best Buy or visit the link down in the description. Now, back to the review. The Google Pixel 5 packs a 6.34 inch full HD panel. It does have a resolution of 2400 by 1080, and it is an OLED display, which is pretty identical to the one that we got last year, but like I said earlier in this video, it is slightly larger. The display is big, bright, vibrant, and it's good for watching media and playing games. It doesn't have the fastest refresh rate at 60 hertz, which is disappointing to see because I was hoping that was something that Google was gonna at least upgrade this year with this new device, and I've seen a lot more manufacturers switch to 90 hertz or 120 hertz with their mid-range and budget devices, so I was expecting Google to at least do the same. I guess we can say the Pixel 5a has respectable specs. It's rocking that same Snapdragon 765 5G chipset we saw last year on the Pixel 5 and Pixel 4a 5G. In other words, it may not rival flagship phones featuring the latest Snapdragon 88 chipset, but with six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, you'll have no trouble browsing, playing games, and consuming media. In general, the processing speeds and stability you'll see with the Google Pixel 5a will be more than adequate for day-to-day -day users. At least, I'll say your average day-to-day -day user. Now, if you're planning on doing a lot of heavy gaming or other processor-heavy tasks, you're likely going to face some hiccups here and there. So if you are a power, power hungry user, then I highly suggest picking up a device with one of the recent 800 series chipsets inside of it. But the average user is not gonna have an issue with the Snapdragon 765G. One of the biggest reasons people purchase Pixel devices is simply because of software updates. 
as one would expect, the Pixel 5 will be one of the very first devices to get the latest versions of Android. So theoretically, the Pixel 5a should get Android 13, 14, and 15. It should also receive monthly security patches and quarterly feature drops. The bottom line is that if software updates are important to you, the Pixel 5a is a great choice. Another advantage to picking up a Pixel 5a is that the phone comes with three months of Google One. You can expect 100 gigs of cloud storage, unlimited photo and video uploads to Google Photos, and automatic backup across Google Drive, Gmail, Google Photos, and a lot more. The Pixel 5a has the same camera as the Pixel 4a 5G, a 12.2 megapixel f1.7 aperture, dual pixel main camera with autofocus, and both optical and electronic image stabilization. And you'll also find a 16 megapixel f2.2 aperture ultra wide sensor on the back of this device as well. Once again, there's no telephoto lens here, but aside from that, the Pixel 5a's camera setup is good as its predecessor and the rest of the Pixel lineup, taking shots that have stunning clarity and realistic colors. There's also an 8 megapixel selfie camera, which takes fairly decent photos for a front facing camera, likely because of Google's amazing software. But yeah, I actually did a full camera review on all of these cameras. So if you wanna see something a little bit more detailed where I get in depth, go check that out. A card should pop up and links will be down in the description. The battery in the Google Pixel 5a is the biggest ever for a Pixel phone. At 4,680 milliamp, it's roughly 13% larger than the battery in the Pixel 5 and roughly 17% larger than the one on the 4a 5G. Depending on your usage, the Pixel 5a will be able to last you maybe even two to three days of usage. Um, I was easily pulling like just two days of usage, which is pretty impressive. And that's coming from someone who streams a lot of content on their device. The Pixel 5a does charge at a maximum speed of 18 watts, which is pretty good. Sadly, there's no wireless charging here once again, which I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, if you're gonna drop another device and it's practically the same as last year's device, the least you could include is wireless charging, especially nowadays because it's becoming a lot more popular. So I feel like it should just be a standard on all devices moving forward. But uh, I don't know, that's not on me. There's no wireless charging on this device. So if you appreciate that, it's not here. Hopefully we'll see it next year. There's a lot that's good here, as you'd expect. Google continues to deliver value in a way that few can compete with. They're consistently bringing flagship features on their mid-range devices, and that's something I can truly appreciate for someone who doesn't like to spend a lot on smartphones. It is still missing wireless charging, which is a little bit disappointing, but luckily it's made that up with a big battery this year. If you want to see more reviews like this and tech content, stay tuned by clicking that subscribe button. But other than that, again, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. Bye.